Is your Chinese diesel heater performing as efficiently as it should? Though these are pre-tuned, ready to run right out of the box, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be performing at optimum efficiency at your specific location. You can't expect one generic tune to perform well at sea level and have the same level of performance at high elevation and vice versa. So if you run this right out of the box, you can see that there is potential for this to be a lean tune to your specific location, which can develop into premature flame outs. But in my experience, more than likely, it's going to be on the rich side, which results in high fuel consumption, higher levels of carbon monoxide and soot emissions, which results in clogging and more maintenance intervals. And these things are not fun to clean. But with inexpensive air analyzers like these, just a few minutes of your time and only a few steps, you can simply tune these diesel heaters to be the most efficient at whatever location you are, majority of the locations you're at. And that will reduce your fuel consumption, lower those carbon monoxide and soot emissions, mitigating the issues of clogging and giving it a low to no maintenance intervals on this particular unit and furthering the life of the unit altogether. So whether you've been running one of these for years, just right out of the box, or you're on the fence about buying one of these, which I recommend you do, they are brilliant. And you wanna guarantee that you are the most efficient at your specific location. Well, this is the video for you. Stay tuned, literally. Hey, welcome back to the Gator Overland channel. I'm John, and today I'm gonna to show you how to simply tune your Chinese diesel heater to be the most efficient at your specific location using inexpensive air analyzers like these, also known as carbon monoxide detectors. Now, if you're not using carbon monoxide detectors while you're using your Chinese diesel heaters, I highly recommend you do. There is potential that the exhaust can go up into the intake and blow it into whatever space that you want. And this just is an extra step of peace of mind for your safety. So when you get it tuned, these actually become alarms and I just wanna ensure that you're still here tomorrow. So as far as the units go, you might see that yours is a little bit different than mine or the one you plan to buy, but the internals of these things are generally all the same. All made in China, different box, different sticker, probably the same on the inside, all the way down to the admin code on the front. So if yours looks different, don't worry there. Now, if you're not mechanically inclined, no worries there. It's as simple as punching a few buttons, changing some settings, then putting one of these air analyzers in front of the exhaust or near the exhaust, but not in the heat, obviously. And just basically looking at the parts per million to see if they increase or decrease while changing the pump settings. And you're wanting to have the least parts per million for whatever setting you stop at. And that pretty much tunes your unit. Now, what's going to be different is my settings versus probably yours. Unless you're at flat Southeast Texas, nearly sea level, my settings are not going to be the same as yours. So you can just use my method as a reference. In fact, what I ask you to do is once you tune your settings to whatever your specific location is, leave a comment below of your elevation or your location and your pump setting and your fan setting. And that can help anybody else who is a viewer who might live near you or at the same elevation to have a general tune for their start out there. So this, this video is gonna be time stamped, allowing you to go to any point in the video without having to scroll through. Don't forget to check the description below for links to our Amazon storefront where you'll find all these products here and contact information should you need to get a hold of me. Let's get started. What you'll need, everything you see here is at least but not limited to what is required to make this happen. Assuming you have or you're in the process of getting a Chinese diesel heater, you'll need your air analyzers or carbon monoxide detectors. This is the least expensive one. It works great. I have it, it can clip on things. It has a light up, it has an audible and you can mute the sensor, works great. We ended up getting this one for our camping adventures because it's waterproof, it's rechargeable. Also, it's magnetic. Not only does it show you the parts per million, but it also shows you the temperature or ambient temperature and the humidity, which is really nice. You'll need diesel fuel, make sure your unit is full and you'll need a power source, whether it be 12 or 24 volt. We use an EcoFlow River Pro and it works great. Now I wanna point out that some of these diesel heater units actually come with a Bluetooth remote option. Some of the more advanced, more expensive models actually have a Bluetooth app and allow you to do all the settings that we're doing today through the phone. This is just convenient enough, especially when it's really cold outside, you're up in the tent, you don't wanna to have to come and turn up the heat. You do it right here from the remote. But the remote is not always paired. If you press the button and you can see that it's got the little green light turning on, but you're not seeing anything happen over here. All you have to do is hold up on the up arrow for a matter of seconds screen's going to go to HFA displayed. All you have to do from there is hit the off button and it should clear out the screen. That means you're paired. And from there, you can press the plus button or the minus button to increase or decrease the temperature and the on button or the off button. As long as you got 12 volts of power, you're going to be good to go. This thing's super convenient. 
Now for recording purposes, I went ahead and moved into the garage. It's a little bit easier to see the display rather than doing it in the sun. And it'll be easier for you. Just make sure if you're doing it in the garage, the garage door is open, have it properly ventilated and have one of your carbon monoxide detectors detect it so we don't get any carbon monoxide poisoning. I just wanted to go over a few of the parameters as far as the way this unit is set up. So generally, whenever you have this thing plugged in, not powered on with the heater, but just the display on, you can go and do all your admin settings, everything that we're going to be doing without the unit on. So that's what we're gonna do first. I just wanted to go over a few of the functions first. So we'll have what's called the P heat range or the power heat range, we'll call it power. And you'll have a range from 1.4 power to 5.4 power. And basically that's the heat increase. If you want it to be less heat, you go to 1.4. I think there's another setting that you can do it by Celsius, but in this case, I find it easier to just use the P setting. So 1.4 to 5.4. And what we're gonna be doing is adjusting our fan speed and our fuel mixture to correspond with those particular settings. And what we end up finding is the most efficient at the low setting and then at the high setting, will now make a new range and everything that you adjust in between these. So if you want to increase the temperature or decrease the temperature, your new settings will set the parameters and everything will move linearly and everything will maintain efficiency all the way through the range, which is what the whole point of this process is. And you'll, you'll get it whenever we get going. So once you get into the admin settings, there's a particular code and you have to press this settings button. It looks kind of like a gear or a flower. And you'll do that one, two, three times and then it'll access a padlock looking key. And from there, it'll be four dashing lines. Your initial code is going to be 1688. That's a generic admin code for all of them. So you're gonna press in up or down and put in the proper code and 1688. Now, if you cycle through this stuff, it only allows you to go through one cycle of all the settings in the admin, and then it goes back to the main display screen. And then you have to retype in the admin code, 1688. Rather than doing that every time, there is a convenience here. I'm gonna show you how to reset your pin code to the most convenient number, which allows you to go one, two, three, and you'll just press up, okay. That starts at six, up, six, up, six, up, six. So four sixes, and then you access all your pump settings and your heater settings, and it's that simple. So from there, your pump default settings are going to be 1.6 and then as you cycle through you press ok that's going to be your high pump settings that's basically whenever you're at the high the highest heat and then you go over to your low fan speed it starts out you're able to adjust those that mine was 1680 i adjusted it down to 1500 it seemed like 1680 was still a little bit high for being even on the low setting so 1500 there and you cycle through and then it goes to the high speed setting 4,300 would be our equivalent to 5.4 on the heat setting. Now this comes default at 5,000 as the max. Rather than running this thing at 5,000 max RPM at the high setting, I lowered the high setting just a little bit. That way we're not putting it at the max and we'll get a little bit longevity out of that motor, not running it at the max, if that makes sense. So once you get to those settings, and now it's timed out. So you go one, two, three, and then up, okay, up, okay, up, okay, up, okay. You can see how it's a little bit cumbersome. And then we we'll cycle through. We've set our settings at 1500 as our base and 4300 as our high base for the fan speed. You can do this actual setting for your own. The actual pulse or the pump settings is where it's gonna be different from yours and mine. So once we cycle through there, it's gonna say what 12 volts or 24 volts, you can press up or down to change that. Sensor, this is a fan sensor. There's two settings, leave it on one for most people. I'm not sure what PF stands for. And off, this is how you get into your admin settings for changing your pin code. From here, once you get to off, you're gonna press up to where it's on, and then you'll press okay. It'll come up with your four dashes again and then you just press up, okay, up, okay, up, okay, and once you push them all in as six, 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 you press okay, and that will be your new admin code, and then all you have to do to double check that is go up, okay, up, okay, up, okay, up, okay, and you don't have to do the one, six, eight, eight. It's super convenient. But now that you know the general parameters here, we're gonna go ahead and set up your fan speed, 1500, your, for the low, your 
high speed is 4300 and then we'll start with turning this thing on the actual heater itself you want to let it come up to the full temperature you'll see all the bars kind of come across here and the thing will start spinning and once you get to that second red bar it'll take about another minute or two and then you'll actually hear the fan speed come down to whatever setting you had as your general p setting so basically it does its own startup and then it gets to it and then once it finds that it's at optimum temperature it goes to whatever you preset we typically are at about a 3.0 or a 2.8 preset and once it starts there you'll go all the way down to the lowest speed setting right here and then we'll start doing our general tune all right now comes the fun part actually tuning this thing I think you're going to be impressed with how simple this actually is. So by now we've set our pin to all sixes for convenient access to the advanced settings and we've lowered our fan speed down to 15 or 1600 and our high fan speed down to about 4300. From there we've turned on our unit and it should be running at full optimum temperature. The second red light bulb should be on there and you might have even heard your unit come back down. I typically start mine at about 2.8. It'll ramp up really high, it'll produce a bunch of fumes, and then once it starts warming up, it'll come back down, and once it's at optimum temperature, you'll hear it actually settle out and you won't hear any more fluctuation. That's when you know it's time to start tuning. Now from there, we're gonna put our air analyzer just within the vicinity of the exhaust port, not directly in front of it because it's gonna be really hot, we don't want it to melt, but somewhere in the vicinity, it's about a foot away or so, I would say, and it's pretty sensitive, so it'll actually pick it up. From here, we want to access our advanced settings. So go ahead, put in your pin code and get to the first P setting. It should be about 1.6. And from here, all you're really gonna do is press up on the pulse increase and do about 0.2 to 0.4 at a time. And just monitor your uh, air analyzer over here and you'll start to see the parts per million slowly increase. And then once you get to where you start seeing it spike pretty good, you know that you're actually starting to have a rich mixture it's being less efficient building soot and is going to be basically less efficient. So, you know, to start going back down at that point, I typically get uh, up to about the thirties whenever it's doing its thing. And then once it actually starts to peak a little bit, just let it settle, see if it comes back down, increase if needed or decrease. And then once it starts coming back down, you'll see it get down anywhere under 30 is ideal, but ideally I can get mine between low teens all the way down to seven and sometimes even zero. So if you can get that, depending on what the atmosphere is going on outside, humidity, I'm sure that has something to do with it, but send them somewhere into the low teens to that particular range, and you're pretty much set on the low. Now, from there, if you haven't already reset your screen to the main setting, get back into your pin code and go to the second P setting, which starts out as your high P, and it's gonna be somewhere in the 5.6 range. Again, you're gonna increase until you start to see it significantly change on the parts per million, and then start working it back down until you get the lowest value possible, somewhere in the low teens, ideally anything under 30. And you've set your range. You've now matched your low pump speed to the low fan speed, and your high pump speed to the high fan speed, and your range is now done. So any increase in your temperature for your preference of making it more hot, or more less hot, I should say, it's gonna increase the pump speed and the fan speed in a linear fashion and you should have efficiency all the way through the range that's the whole point of actually doing this thing and you can double check it with your air analyzer and if everything works out then you're all good now for my settings i actually i'm at sea level i went ahead and wrote it on the side so i know that if i get to sea level i can quickly put it back or at least double check it then anytime you go to a different elevation geographic location you can always double check your unit and conveniently write it down speaking of conveniently writing it down if you do all these settings here you figure out yours go ahead put a comment below of your settings your elevation or your location and it can help me or others out and get a general parameter of what needs to be increased or decreased well if you made it this far in the settings then you now have a diesel heater that is tuned specific to your location on the map we absolutely love our little unit we've camped with it all the way down to 20 degrees fahrenheit and had a comfortable 70 degree atmosphere in our rooftop tent the other great thing is it's warm dry air coming out of that so you won't have to worry about any of the humidity or condensation that develops on the inside of your tents it's going to work great for your rvs your van lifes and even small garage spaces just make sure you have a carbon monoxide detector just for that extra peace of mind of safety on your end and that about wraps things up if you enjoyed today's video found it informative or helpful in making your decision to go with a chinese diesel heater of your own not only that but how to tune it specifically to your location on the map go ahead give us a big thumbs up let us know how we're doing 
share if you'd like. I'd appreciate that. For a heads up on any future installs or adventures, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, notification bell. You can follow us along our journey. Don't forget to check the description below for links to the Amazon affiliate products that we have here, as well as contact information should you need to get a hold of me. I'm always happy to answer any questions you may have. Remember, we at Gator Overland encourage each and every one of you to take a daily moment to unplug and reconnect with the outdoors, even if it's just for a few minutes. Have fun, keep it safe, and just go. Thanks, y'all.